Good afternoon, everybody. Tom Smith here from Option Monster Trade Monster. Thanks for joining us. Uh, today we have special guest Chuck Hughes, who's probably our most frequent speaker. Uh, does a lot of education, and uh, obviously everyone knows he's a seven-time world trading champion. And I know he's got a competition going on right now, if I'm correct, Chuck. Yes, that is correct. I'm going to talk about that. <laughs> All right, that's great to hear. Thanks for joining us, Chuck. And I know that we have some visitors here that were with us, uh, Chuck and I in Ireland in Las Vegas this past weekend at the conference, and uh, thanks for joining us. Chuck, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to give you the reins, and let's go ahead and get started. Okay, great. Uh, thanks, Tom. And uh, I just uh, want to thank you, Tom, for taking the time to put on these uh, webinars. Uh, I enjoy doing them. and. It's uh, great to be here today. Okay, okay I'm gonna put, yeah, we're good. Okay, I'm going to put this in slideshow mode. And today we're going to talk about trading options for high returns with low risk. And I'm going to show you the uh, trades that I have on right now uh, that are doing very well in this uh, choppy, choppy type of uh, market. And we're going to look at the advantages of option spreads versus directional trades. There are some time periods where uh, the market favors directional trades and you can make more money with directional trades. And there's other times... Uh, we may be having a volume issue right now. I don't know if you can hear me. Uh, I can hear you. Can, can you hear me? Tom, can you hear me? Okay. Um, I'm going to proceed on so here. That sound check, folks. We appreciate it. Sorry, Chuck. Okay. Can you hear me okay? Okay. Let me talk about my uh, background here for just a minute. Um, I started my options trading career uh, 30 years ago, and at the time, I developed a basic trend following system that I still use today to select uh, directional trades. And then over the years, um, I also developed option spread strategies that I'm going to talk about today. Now, I started out with a $4,600 trading account, but in my first two years, my tax returns show that I actually made over $460,000 in profits, which was more than I made the previous six years as an airline pilot. So um, this demonstrated to me that I can succeed in trading options, and it's a good uh, second source of income back up for your current income. And my option strategies have produced over $6 million in actual profits. And these are documented in my books and uh, courses. And here's a snapshot of those first two years uh, of my tax returns uh, showing that $460,000 in profits those first two years. And I also won the World Trading Championship seven times. And this is a real money contest where the results are audited before being posted on the sponsor's website. And this year, I'm currently in second place with a 120% return. So year to date, I have 120% real-time return in my contest account, and I utilize the same option spread strategies that we're going to talk about today. And I also have over $656,000 in actual profits in my uh, two brokerage accounts right now, and I'll show you uh, snapshots of those two accounts. And uh, these are all spread trades in these two accounts because, uh, as we will discuss, the market conditions right now favor spread trades. So there's basically two types of option trades. There's uh, directional trades, and you're either long or you're short. And if you're long, the market moves must move up, um, it must increase uh, in price in order for your long position to profit. And if you have a short position, the market must move down for you to profit. So um, market must move in the, in the right direction to profit with directional trades. Um, 
Now, with spread trades, you have a long and a short position. So bullish spreads can profit if the market moves up, down, or remains flat. And I'll show you examples of uh, spread trades that I have on now that can profit either way, uh, regardless of the market conditions. Now, directional trades, they have more profit potential when the market is trending well, but uh, the spreads have more profit potential when the market's choppy or it's not trending well, and uh, the current market conditions favor uh, spread trades. So if I'm going to select a directional trade, uh, option trade, I use uh, four rules that I developed over the years uh, to select option trades with the um, highest probability of success. And this uh, simple four-step uh, process has done very well over the years. Uh, step one, we determine the price trend of the stock using the 50 and 100-day EMA system. Uh, step two, we confirm that price trend using on-balance volume and the new 52-week high list or the new 52-week low list if you're going to take a short trade. And this allows us to isolate uh, the best profit opportunities. Then step three is we select a low-risk entry point using the Keltner channels. This is a very important step in the process because you want to get uh, a low-risk entry from the very uh, start of your trade. And then step four, uh, we select the option strike price using what I call the 1% rule. So if you decide to um, take an option trade, a lot of times you'll have hundreds or even thousands of strike prices available. So the challenge is which strike price do I select um, that will have the highest probability of success? And I use a very simple rule, what I call the 1% rule. And with the 1% rule, the underlying stock or ETF only has to go up 1% in order for that option trade to break even and start making money. So this gives us a, a much better chance of success with a directional option trade using this 1% rule to select the option strike price. So uh, in the second half of 2012 uh, through last year, uh, the markets were, were trending pretty well. This is a snapshot of the price action of the S&P 500 index. You can see um, a really strong price uptrend. Uh, the uh, corrections were uh, well maintained, and uh, the market just continued to move up. So that's that's an example of a market that's uh, trending well. Uh, here's the Nasdaq uh, 100 over the same time period. You can see in Last year, it was trending very well. Um, the declines were very, very contained, and it just kept moving up. Here's the Russell 2000. So when you have trending markets like this, um, I tend to take uh, directional trades uh, because there's more profit potential with these directional trades when you have uh, a trending market. So what I want to do is just show you a snapshot of my uh, two trading accounts last year when the market was trending well. I had $707,000 in open trade profits when I took these snapshots and I had an average return of 65%. And uh, account number one had a $483,000 uh, profit. And this snapshot lists the, uh, all the directional trades I had in the account at the time and again, the market was trending well back then, so I had directional trade. So I had a combination of uh, ETFs, uh, stocks, and uh, call option uh, directional trades. And in account number two, I had $224,000 in open trade profit. So I'm just giving you an idea of how I traded uh, the markets last year when they were trending really well. So. Um, I had a pretty high return in these accounts, uh, about 70% uh, with these directional trades, and these were all uh, directional trades. So this this year, of course, everything changed, and the markets have become a lot more choppy. Here's a snapshot of the Russell 2000, uh, S&P 500, and the NASDAQ. So we went from 
a market that was really trending well in the second half of 2012 and last year to a market that's uh, a lot more choppy and it's more difficult to trade directional trades in this kind of choppy action because you can get stopped out easily from your directional trade. So when the markets become choppy, you really can't tell how long these choppy markets will continue or if the declines will accelerate into a correction. So what I like to do is, number one, I'll initiate spread trades that I have. Uh, that I'll initiate spread trades on existing and on, on existing directional trades. So you, you saw the snapshot of those directional trades in my trading accounts last year. So this year when the markets became choppy, I initiated spread trades on those directional trades. And I also initiate new spread trades that can profit if the market's up flat or down at option expiration. And I'll show you examples of that. So basically this year, when the market started to get choppy, um, I legged into a spread trade on those existing directional trades, and that allowed me to uh, provide direct uh, downside protection for those directional trades in case the market kept going down. And at the same time, it increased the uh, profit potential on those existing directional trades. So this is this is a good strategy to employ when uh, the markets get choppy. So I currently have um, $656,000 in open trade profits on these uh, spread trades in my two accounts. And I utilize the uh, two types of option spreads and the two types of stock spreads that we'll, we'll talk about today. So here's a snapshot of my account this year. And uh, I have all spread trades this year. And uh, as, as I mentioned, I legged into spread trades on the directional trades that I had last year. So I uh, currently have $656,000 uh, in open trade profits in uh, these two accounts. And I have a combination of uh, stock spread trades and option spread trades. So you can see uh, I do have some stock and ETF positions. And um, I have spread trades on those uh, stock and ETF p uh, positions, and I also have uh, option spreads, which we're going to talk about here shortly. So these are just a listing of all my uh, trades and the long and short positions for the uh, various spread trades. Um, trading account number two, I have a $189,000 profit, and again, I'm just showing you a snapshot of all the spread trades that I currently have uh, because the market uh, favors these types of uh, trades. So I have two types of option spreads, option debit spreads and market neutral uh, strangles. And one important thing I wanted to note about these, these types of spread trades is that you can't get into trouble with these types of spreads if the market goes against you. So the most you can lose with these is uh, the amount that you paid for the spread, and you don't have to worry about getting a margin call or uh, losing more money than you invest. So that, I think that's a really important point, and I only take uh, spread trades that have limited risk in that I can't lose more than I invest. And then there's two types of stock uh, spreads, the married put spreads and then the covered calls. <clears throat> So I like to uh, diversify my spread portfolio, and I trade both debit spreads and market neutral strangles. Uh, the debit spreads can profit if the market is up, flat, or even down, and I'll show you examples of that uh, trades that I currently have on. And I'll show examples of in-the-money debit spreads that I initiate, initiated recently that have a 39 to 70% profit potential with good downside protection. And these were uh, spread trades that I initiated simultaneously. In other words, I didn't leg into an existing directional trade with these uh, in-the-money debit spreads. Um, I, I bought a call option and sold a call option simultaneously. And um, 
I'm going to show you the, these examples of these trades that I took recently, and they have uh, anywhere from 39 to 70 percent profit potential with good uh, downside protection. And I also like to trade um, a combination of short, intermediate, and long-term spreads. So I have uh, spreads that are one month, two months, three months in, um, until expiration, and then I also have uh, spreads on leaps options, uh, for, uh, which are longer-term spreads. Um, so I like to mix it up and diversify my portfolio so I have a combination of, of uh, both short and intermediate and also uh, long-term spreads in which I use um, leaps options. And I also like to um, trade these spreads both ways. In other words, I'll initiate both legs of a spread trade simultaneously, uh, and I also like to leg into spreads on existing directional trades uh, to increase that profit potential. So that's another way that I like to uh, diversify my spread portfolio. So spreads have a long position and a short position, and of course the long position profits as the underlying stock or ETF moves up in price, and the short position profits as the underlying stock or ETF moves down in price. And with uh, debit spreads, it's possible uh, to profit if the underlying stock increases in price, remains flat, or declines in price. And we'll show you some examples of that. So directional trades, of course, um, require that the stock increase in price to profit. And if you're taking directional trades in a choppy market, uh, you can get easily get stopped out of a directional stock or option trade. And if you're trading options and you take a directional trade, then you always have um, the risk of a 100% loss on that option trade. So that's a loss that you don't want to incur. And in choppy markets, uh, if you have bad timing with an option trade, you can easily lose 100% of your uh, premium. Now, as far as selecting the type of, of uh, spread, uh, I'll, I'll take, uh, I'll trade debit spreads on stocks and ETFs that have rich premiums, and then I'll trade market neutral strangles on stocks and ETFs with low premiums. So, uh, if you're trading debit spreads on a stock that has rich premiums, when you when you sell that premium. Um, that the time value portion of that premium becomes profit at option expiration. So you want to trade these uh, debit spreads and sell that rich premium. And if the underlying stock or ETF has a low premium, um, then you want to buy a call option and then buy a put option and create a market neutral strangle spread. So if you trade a market neutral strangle on a stock with low premiums and you're not going to pay much for that put option. So that's how I decide whether I'm going to do a debit spread or a market neutral strangle. It, de it depends on the uh, amount of premium uh, that's available for that uh, stock or ETL. So with bullish uh, debit spreads, you buy a call option and then you sell a call option with a higher strike price. And this can be done two ways. You can buy the call option and sell the call option simultaneously. Or if you have a directional trade in a call option and you have a profit on it, um, at a later date, you can sell, sell a call option. Um, and that will produce uh, cash income into your trading account. So if I have a, a directional option trade and then um, I sell a call option with a higher strike price, so let's say I sold a five-point premium, then $500 in cash will be uh, credited to my brokerage account as a result of that option sale. So when you sell that uh, call option, um, you get cash in income into your account and you also have downside protection. And with a debit spread, the call option that you purchase will profit 
if the price of the underlying stock increases and the call option that you sold will profit if the price of the underlying stock decreases and your risk is limited to the cost of the uh, spread. So let's take a, uh, a look at some uh, examples of how I turn uh, directional trades into spread trades. So let's look at legging into debit spreads. If you uh, purchase an option and the option increases in value, the sale of an option at a later date will increase the profit potential of the existing option purchase and at the same time it will also provide downside protection in the event that underlying stock decreases in price. So uh, big advantages with uh, initiating these uh, debit spreads. So I'm going to show you a couple examples here of debit spreads that I took recently. Um, and these were on stocks and ETFs that have a uh, rich option premium. So uh, rather than do a market neutral strangle, uh, I want to take advantage of the rich premiums um, with these uh, stocks that I'm going to show you here. First one is Google. And Google trended well last year. So I purchased uh, the June 950 call last year uh, when the stock was trending well. So I had a, I had a profit in that. Uh, 950 call that I purchased and as we can see here's a the price action of Google and we can see that it's become very choppy so um, I sold the June 1130 strike call uh, to help protect the profits on this 950 call that I that are already owned so this created a debit spread so Bought the 950 call, and then at a later date, I sold the 1130 call. This created a debit spread and allowed me to uh, profit um, if Google uh, stock goes up, stays flat, or even goes down. So here's um, here's my brokerage confirmation and uh, purchase the uh, Google 950, the June 950 call. At 89.16, and then when the price action became choppy, I sold the uh, June 11:30 call for 54.50. So when I sold that June 11:30 call, I collected $5,450 in cash from the sale of uh, that option premium. So let's look at the profit potential for this trade. And I'm going to use my call option spread analysis to uh, calculate this profit potential. And the calculator will uh, calculate the profit potential based on uh, the move in Google stock uh, at option expiration. In this example, from a 10% increase in Google stock to a 10% decrease in Google stock. So the calculator will. Uh, calculate the uh, profit potential based on the uh, price movement of Google stock at option expiration. And this is uh, one of the um, adjusted Google options. They recently had that uh, two for one split. So the option that I owned that I purchased last year uh, was adjusted and it delivers uh, 100 shares of the class A and 100 shares of class C. So it's a little confusing, but <laughs> um, Anyway, the, uh, you can see from the, from the analysis that if Google stock stays flat, uh, then I, I would realize a 419% return. So uh, this bottom row here um, gives you the profit potential, the percentage profit potential based on the uh, move in the underlying stock. So we can see if the stock is flat, um, I'll have a 419% uh, return and a dollar profit of $14,534. And if, if Google stock goes up at all, then a 419% return. Um, and if Google stock drops 10%, I'll still have a 125% return. So in this example, um, I'll profit if uh, Google stock is flat. Um, or goes up uh, or even goes down 10%. So 
this is an example of the advantages of creating the spread and uh, versus just holding on to a directional trade. So when I sold that 1130 strike call, that $5,400 in cash went into my account. So that reduced uh, my risk, obviously, and um, provided downside protection in the event Google stock went down. So uh, this is a much better scenario to have if the stock starts to decline than to just hold on to your uh, directional trade. <clears throat> Here's another example. This is for Chenier uh, Energy, and I purchased the uh, Chenier Energy 40 strike calls at 1260, and uh, the price of the uh, stock went up. And a couple weeks later, um, I sold the uh, 55 strike call for six points. So uh, purchased the 40 strike for 1260. And then shortly thereafter, I collected six points of premium by selling the 55 strike. So um, I almost cut my risk in half. So um, instead of having $1,260 at risk with this directional trade, the 40 strike call, now I only had $660 at risk because I collected this six point premium. <clears throat> and here's the uh, uh, brokerage confirmation. So you can see in uh, March, I bought the uh, 40 strike call at 1260. And then uh, three weeks later, um, I sold the 55 strike call for six points. And that created uh, a debit spread. And um, when I uh, sold that 55 strike call, uh, that increased the existing uh, profit that I had on the 40 strike call. And at the same time provided uh, downside protection. So those are big advantages for uh, creating spreads uh, rather than just holding on to your uh, directional trade. And the call option spread analysis shows um, uh, purchased the 40 strike call 1260, sold the 55 strike call at six. So if LNG is flat at option expiration, um, I get 127% return. And if uh, LNG is down 10%, I still get 100% return. So uh, here's another example. Um, of a spread trade that can profit if LNG is flat, uh, if it goes up in price, uh, or if it even goes down 10%, I still profit. So that's the advantage of these uh, spread trades over the uh, directional trades. So now let's talk about how to earn a 39 to 70% return for a stock that remains flat. And what we're going to talk about now is um, the simultaneous uh, uh, purchase of a call option and sale of a call option. So we're going to assume we have no uh, directional trades that we want to um, try a debit spread with uh, a stock, and we're going to buy the call and sell the call simultaneously. And I'll show you a couple examples of trades that I took uh, recently. Um, and I, I like to take these types of trades, these debit spreads, when uh, the markets get choppy. And um, we can see the Russell 2000 this year has been choppy. The uh, NASDAQ 100 market's been choppy. <clears throat> and um, I'm going to show a few snapshots of previous years uh, when the market was choppy. And uh, I'm going to show you the uh, daily price charts. And what these uh, price charts have in common is <clears throat> there's a lot of choppy action with the stock uh, or with the S&T, but uh, it's virtually unchanged. So the question is, how do you profit when the market's choppy uh, and then is flat uh, over, over a, a specific time period? So if you're trading a directional trade, in here, the odds are you're going to get stopped out. So this is a snapshot of 2012, and I'd like to just look at different time periods so you can get a, a good perspective on this. And this is the S&P in 2011. 
And again, you can see a lot of choppy price swings, but the S&P in this time frame is virtually um, unchanged. <clears throat> Here's another snapshot, 2010, a lot of choppy price action, and the S&P is just about unchanged. And 2011, uh, the S&P uh, started the year at 1257 and ended the year at 1257. So you had a lot of choppy action, but the, the S&P actually was unchanged for the year. So the question is, how do you profit in this type of market? So what I like to do is I trade these in-the-money debit spreads where I buy a call uh, that's in the money and sell a call that's in the money. And what that does is it gives you a good profit potential and at the same time, lots of downside protection. So <clears throat> most of the time, the the markets are choppy and uh, aren't are not trending well. So uh, trending market is the exception. So what we had at the end of 2012 and 2013 was the exception. Most of the time, the markets like this, it's choppy and flat. So let's let's take a look at this in the money uh, debit spread uh, strategy that that can profit in these kind of markets. So with these choppy markets, you can't tell how long the choppy market's going to continue, uh, or if it declines, will that decline accelerate into a correction? So what you want to do is initiate these in-the-money uh, debit spreads that can profit if the market is up flat or down with option expiration. And this, this is kind of interesting. This is a snapshot several months ago of my um, uh, trading account, and I, I saw that the uh, NASDAQ was down 1.66%, and the, the Dow was down 85 points. So um, I noticed uh, this, this is a uh, snapshot of my spread trades, and I noticed that day, even though um, the NASDAQ was down 1.66%, um, my uh, portfolio that day had a, a slight profit. So um, when the NASDAQ is down that, that much in this portfolio, I would expect at least a 1% to 1.5% loss on the day. But uh, that particular day, uh, I had all spread trades, and I actually had a slight profit even though the NASDAQ was down. So uh, that just shows you that these uh, spread trades um, are a good way to go when the market's choppy or, uh, you know, a day that NASDAQ is down 1.6% and you have a slight profit. That's a much more comfortable way to trade in, in a choppy, uh, volatile market. Chuck, can I ask a quick question of you? Yeah. Um, based on this choppiness you're speaking about, do you see spread trades factoring into, let's say, like seasonality? Um, within certain sectors, and do you attack that based on your core step process? Yeah, that, that's a good question, and the uh, short answer is no. Um, I don't, I don't uh, factor in the uh, seasonality. Um, I, I've done a lot of research on seasonality um, over the last 20 years, and uh, I found that sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. <laughs> so. Um, you know, I can't. Um, I, I I'd rather uh, base the decision on my prime trade select if I'm going to try to select a, a directional trade uh, rather than use any type of uh, seasonality because um, I, I just found that the seasonality is is unreliable. So with uh, let's compare spreads again to directional trades with the. Uh, Directional trade, uh, that requires the stock to increase in price to profit. Um, if you take a directional trade in a choppy market uh, and you have bad timing, then, of course, you can get stopped out. And with an option, you can lose up to 100%. So what I like to do is trade these in-the-money debit spreads. And here's an example. I took this trade several weeks ago. and um, I bought 20 of the uh, triple Qs. This is a leveraged uh, uh, triple Q uh, ETF, uh, symbol T, Q, Q, Q. 
and that's uh, that's uh, three times the leverage of the NASDAQ 100 index. So um, I bought 20 of the January 15 40 calls at 27.62, and then I sold to open 20 of the uh, 65 calls at 9.66. So this was a simultaneous uh, purchase and sale of the triple Qs, and this was an in-the-money debit spread. So the goal here is to earn a good return, and at the same time, with the in-the-money spread, um, to create a lot of uh, downside protection in case the market moves against you. So this this has a big advantage over a directional trade in the triple Qs because I have uh, downside protection, and if the markets start to get volatile and they go against me, if I just have a directional trade, I could easily get stopped out of my um, directional trade, whereas if I have a spread, I can usually hold that longer and incur uh, a smaller loss because the short call option, in this case the uh, January 65 call, that's going to profit if the triple Qs go down in price. So this is the kind of uh, trade I like to take um, when the markets get choppy and the future is uncertain. You don't know which way the market's going to go. So I like to uh, train, trade these in the money debit spreads. So um, the uh, here's here's a call option spread analysis, and uh, this calculated the profit potential for this uh, trade, assuming various price changes in the triple Q at option expiration from um, in this case a 10% increase to a 10% decrease. And the uh, bottom row here gives the percent return, and the um, second to last row here gives the dollar uh, return for this uh, spread trade. So uh, if the triple Qs are flat at option expiration, I get a 39% return. If the triple Qs go up at all, I get a 39% return. And if the triple Qs are down 10%, I get a 36% return. So uh, this can profit uh, whether the triple Qs are up or down. And um, I like to take this type of a trade in this type of a market. So this has a, a, a good return um, uh, between now, uh, has good return potential between now and option expiration, and at the same time provides uh, downside protection. Here's one more example, um, and this is for the uh, FAS. That's the uh, uh, the leveraged financial uh, ETF, and uh, I bought 10 of the uh, FAS uh, January 16. So this is a leap trade. This is a longer term trade, but still provides a, a, a really good return uh, for such a low risk trade. So bought the January 1650 call at 4191 sold to open 10 of the January 1690 calls at 1848 so this was a in the money uh spread trade a longer term trade but it still has a very good uh return potential and uh really good uh downside protection so uh the call option spread analysis shows that um if FAS is flat at option expiration, I have a 70% return. If it's up at all, I have a 70% return. And if it's down 10%, I still have a 70% return. So I've got downside protection and a really decent trade, uh, or a really de decent uh, return potential, uh, but this is a longer term tra trade and I like to diversify my portfolio. So I'll have these longer term trades in there with the intermediate and uh, the shorter term. So I like to mix it up just to diversify my portfolio. So uh, this has a very good return potential and at the same time, uh, good downside protection. So the advantages of these option spread versus uh, the option purchase is the option sale provides downside protection, which reduces your risk. Uh, it allows you to maintain your uh, position during a choppy market, 
and can help avoid being stopped out of your position. And as we saw, these spreads can be profitable if the stock goes up, down, or remains flat. And uh, especially with the uh, in the money debit spreads. Okay, one last thing uh, I'd like to take a look at um, are the uh, market neutral uh, strangles. I also have uh, a portfolio of these market neutral strangles, and that's another way to diversify your portfolio between different types of spread strategies. So when you use Prime Trade Select, um, it's it's had a lot of uh, winning uh, directional trades, and you're always faced with that dilemma when you have a winning directional trade, uh, you have to decide whether to hold that trade uh, in case there's further upside profit potential, or uh, do you want to take profits in the case that the stock declines in price? And then, of course, you always have the possibility that that trade will turn into a loss if um, the stock goes down in price. So you're always faced with this dilemma when you have a profitable trade. Do I hold it or do I uh, close it out? And, of course, if you close it out, then you give up any further profit potential if you hold it, then it could turn into a loss. So uh, one way to um, alleviate this dilemma would be to initiate a market neutral strangle. So with the market neutral strangles, you buy a call option and then you buy a put option. And this can be done simultaneously where you can purchase a call and then purchase a put at a later date to leg into the spread. So uh, with the market neutral spreads, the call option that you purchase will profit if the price of the underlying stock increases, and the put option purchased will profit if the price of the underlying stock decreases, and your risk is limited to the cost of the spread. Uh, and the interesting thing about these spreads is there's no limit on the profit potential of the spread. So if the inter underlying stock continues to increase in price, then the profit on the spread will continue to increase. So there's no limit on your uh, profit potential. And if you uh, leg into the spread um, and you purchase a put option, then again, that will not cap the profit potential of the call option. And at the same time, it provides uh, downside protection in the event the underlying stock decreases in price. So let's look at, at a few examples of the uh, market neutral spreads. Um, I use Prime Trade Select, which is my directional um, trade system, to select a call option for XLV uh, last year when XLV was trending well. This is the daily price action of the XLV, and we can see last year it was trending very well. So. I used Prime Trade Select, bought a call option last year. Uh, I purchased the uh, June uh, 36 strike uh, call option. Uh, uh, oh no, I purchased 36 contracts of the um, the June 45 strike call at 681, and I used the 1% uh, rule uh, to select the option strike price. So uh, XLV only had to go up 1% and the trade would break even and I would start making a profit. So I used prime trade select um, and did a, a directional trade on XLV. Uh, and you can see that it, it worked out really well. The market was trending well last year. So I bought uh, 36 contracts of the 45 strike call at 681. So my low risk entry for the uh, 45 strike call was successful and the trade was uh, profitable. And so I was facing that dilemma. Do I uh, sell the contracts, take my profits in case the XLV goes down, um, or do I hold the uh, call option in case XLV continues to rally? So uh, rather than sell that call, um, I simply purchased a put option uh, when the, the price action for XLV became very choppy. So here's the daily uh, price action, and 
uh, I went ahead and I bought the June 56 put uh, to protect my profits. And at the same time, if XLV continued to rally, then I would participate in any further increases in the uh, XLV. So you can see um, price action became choppy. Uh, didn't know if this uh, downside movement was going to turn into a correction or not. And um, so I purchased a put option, and that protected my existing profits. So by purchasing the put option, that actually allowed me to lock in a profit for this trade, uh, regardless of the price movement of XLV stock. And at the same time, my upside potential was not capped. So if XLV continues to move up in price, then my profit potential increases. Here's the brokerage confirmations uh, showing I bought a uh, 45 strike call at 681, then uh, bought the 56 strike put, put at 90 cents. And I have a um, calculator that will calculate the uh, profit potential for a market neutral trade, assuming various price changes in XLV, uh, in this case, from a 30% increase uh, at option expiration to a 30% uh, decrease. And we can see from this uh, market neutral calculator uh, that the profit potential is not capped. So uh, if the stock is flat at option expiration, I get a 95% return. But if the stock continues to move up in price, then my profit potential continues to move up. And also, if, it's, if it declines, my profit potential increases as that, as that decline um, continues. So um, w th that's an interesting point about these market neutral spreads. Uh, as the stock goes up, your profit potential increases. But um, if the stock is going down, it also increases. So... Uh, by buying that put option, it actually allowed me to lock in a 42% return no matter what happens. So you can see the worst I can do with this trade is a 42% is a return no matter what happens. And if the stock continues to go up, my profits go up. If the stock continues to go down, my profits go up. And if the uh, stock is flat at option expiration, I get a 95% return. If it's up 10%, I get a... Uh, 173% return, so that's a good return. And again, your profit potential is not capped, so a 10% increase in the price would result in a 173% um, return. And one of the nice things about these market neutral trades is once you put this trade on, you can just forget about it. And uh, you don't have to worry about large price decreases. Uh, you don't have to worry about protective stops. Uh, bad earnings reports or big down moves, you just put the trade on and forget about it until uh, expiration. So it's a very um, uh, low stress way to uh, trade options. Here's one more example, and this is uh, for Home De for uh, Home Depot. And um, with Home Depot, I had both a stock position and an option position. I purchased 800 shares of the stock, and I had 18 of the uh, January 55 calls. I purchased those at 12.79. So the uh, price action in Home Depot became choppy. Uh, I had a, a profit in the stock, and I had a profit in the uh, the 55 strike call. So I went ahead and purchased uh, 26 of the uh, August 75 puts. So that allowed me to lock in a profit for this trade, uh, no matter what the price of Home Depot stock does. So uh, I was able to lock in a profit, uh, and at the same time, my upside profit potential was not capped. And here's the brokerage account statement showing this. I had uh, 800 shares of the stock, at, purchased that at 58.90, and purchased the. Um, 55 call at 12.79. So uh, that's 800 shares of stock, 18 contracts. So I went ahead and bought 26 of the August 75 puts to protect these profits. And here's the uh, uh, 
market neutral analysis uh, for this trade. And again, we can see if uh, Home Depot stock is uh, flat at option expiration, they get a 75% return. If it continues to move up in price, then my return potential increases. And uh, I also, uh, it, it enabled me to lock in a 37% profit no matter what the uh, stock does. So again, I just put this trade on and I can forget about it. Um, I don't have to worry about protective stops. If the earnings report is bad, I don't have to worry about it. Um, so it's a very, very comfortable way to trade. This is just a snapshot of an account where I do uh, market neutral uh, spread trades. And I um, circled the market neutral spread trades. And when I took this snapshot, I had an average return of 264%. And um, the, I, I used the market neutral calculator for these trades. And what I did is I calculated the minimum, minimum return on, this, uh, on these spread trades. And I had a minimum profit potential of 186%. So even if all these went to zero, I would still have 186% uh, profit potential. So when I took this, the uh, snapshot, the uh, Average uh, profit was 264%. Okay, so that concludes my uh, presentation. Uh, I'd be glad to take any questions. And uh, if you're interested in these various strategies, um, if you log on to weeklyoptionalert.com uh, and click the trade results page, it'll give you uh, updated trade results for the various strategies. We have a market neutral portfolio. Uh, we have an option spread portfolio, covered calls, uh, option purchase. And um, if you click trade results, you can get the updated results. Uh, so I'd be glad to take any uh, questions at this point. Let's see here. Okay, Tom, can you hear me? Are you there, Chuck? Yes, can you hear me? Okay, yeah, yeah, I can hear you. Rega regarding your, your prime trade select um, in determining what stock you're going to pick and how you start, where would you start with step number one? Okay, that's a good question. Um, actually, the best place to start with prime trade select, if you want to take a long position, is to check that new 52-week high loss. And um, I check that almost every day, and that lists all the stocks that are making a, 50, a new 52-week high. So um, that's a great place to start your search and focus on those stocks that um, continue to make a new 52-week uh, high. Because if they're making a new 52-week high, uh, you know that they're in a price uptrend and that um, the um, – buying power is very strong with those stocks and they tend to continue their up moves. Um, once they make a new 52 week high, they usually continue in that direction. So that's a really good uh, place to start your uh, trade selection. Another question that we were asked a couple of times, Chuck, is sometimes do you just allow yourself to get exercised? Uh, okay. Now you're, are, are you talking about a, uh, a covered call trade or an option Correct. spread? Correct. Okay. Yes. If uh, that, That's a good question. Um, when I have an uh, option spread trade on, uh, if, if, if it's an option uh, debit spread, uh, what I'll do is I'll put in a good till cancel order and to exit that spread trade if I reach 90% of my maximum profit potential. Um, and I just let that... that uh, order sit. And uh, if I get up to 90% of the profit potential, I'll go ahead and take the uh, profit and just close it out and move on to the next trade uh, rather than wait for that extra 10% that I would get at option expiration, uh, especially if the markets are volatile. So 
um, I always have a um, a good to cancel order in to uh, exit that spread at 90% of the maximum uh, profit potential. Uh, last question for you here. Jerry Sims is asking, when you're looking at a Keltner channel, do you does it matter to you hypothetically if it's in the middle to the lower end of it? Would you still purchase it if it's in the middle of a Keltner channel as opposed to the bottom? Yes, that's that's a good question. Uh, when do you pull the trigger, so to speak? Uh, if you, I usually watch stocks uh, for several months, and if I see uh, a stock that's uh, performing well, um, and the stock is trading near the upper channel, of course you don't want to buy when it's near the upper channel because it's getting overbought. So I'll wait till it retraces and. The nice thing about the Keltner channels is they show you a repetitive price pattern for any particular stock. So if I see that that stock uh, retraced most of the time near that middle channel and didn't go down to the lower channel or below the lower channel, then I'll wait for a retracement to the middle channel. If it's a more volatile stock and you can see there was over the course of a year, there was three or four retracements. Uh, to that lower channel, then I'll wait till it gets to the lower channel. So one of the great things about the Keltner channels is it shows you the repetitive price patterns of stock. So you can really key into that and get a, a really low risk entry uh, based on the past uh, price patterns. Uh, Chuck, uh, for those of you that signed up today, Chuck has been kind enough to add a, a free bonus. All attendees today are going to receive a free copy of Extra Money Made Easy Report. And I'm getting a, a lot of thank yous, Chuck, already. I know you can't you know, reach out to him and, and thank everybody, but everyone's thank you for the, the presentation as am I. Okay, great. Uh, I was glad to do it, and um, I enjoy doing these presentations, and we all appreciate um uh, you taking the time, Tom, to uh, put these on. Oh, Chuck, I'm happy to do it. And I, I know for those of you that are, are looking to uh, perhaps download this re uh, recording, by all means, we can get that done for you. I'm going to put it up. I'm going to take the reins over from Chuck just so you know. Um, but if you go to MyTradeMonster.com tomorrow, right here under the month of June, uh, Chuck is kind enough to allow us to record these and allow you to download and play it back as many times as you like. Uh, don't be shy with Chuck's support staff if you have questions regarding the strategies. Otherwise, Chuck, I hope we can get you out next month. Yes. Yeah, I plan on doing that, Tom. And uh, that's, that's great. And I'm going to be posting some great pictures of, from the Island Conference, Chuck. So for those of you that are interested in seeing that, come back to the My Trade Mall and take a look at the gallery. It was a great presentation. So uh, for all of you who are here, Chuck, thank you very much one last time. Okay. Thank you, Tom. Have a great day, everybody. Likewise, and for those of you that joined us again, come back here to My Trade Monster, check out our upcoming webinars, as well as Chuck's archive. We'll be listening to it tomorrow around noontime. If you have any questions regarding brokerage, by all, all means, feel free to contact us. Just click MyTradeMonster.com. All our communication pipeline numbers are up there. Otherwise, uh, happy trading, and don't forget, trade like a monster. Good night, everybody. Thank you.